Did you know there was a Christian radio station in Utah County, KEYY, at 1450 AM and 91.3 FM? We'll talk about that next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us. Funny they keep saying Bishop Earl. That's yes. so silly. <laughs> anyway, I'm here with Ruth Cox, and Ruth, it's just a delight to have you here, and I appreciate Thank you, you coming. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. And willing to share your story. I. As we usually do, tell us where you were born and raised and stuff. I was born in a little town in southern Utah, Huntington. Oh, yeah. It's about 20 miles south of Price. Yeah. My dad was a coal miner, so I oh. got to sing the song with yeah. Loretta Young, or Loretta <laughs> Lynn, I think. Anyway. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I used to have a credit union in Huntington, Utah. Oh. I used to audit years he, ago. He was a coal miner and a farmer. Yeah. And I was baptized at age eight. And okay. Were your folks uh, LDS? My or? parents were very Mormon yeah. and have been Mormon for yeah. many, many years. And brothers and sisters, did you have? I had two brothers and one sister. Okay. And uh, so baptized at age eight. And baptized at age eight, and I attended and faithfully primary mutual. Yeah, uh, back in the good old days, maybe. Back in huh? the good, well, <laughs> when it was called mutual. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They, things have changed a yeah. lot since we we were growing up, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. And did you ever have so, any questions that the church wasn't true, or you always believed it was true? No, I always believed it was true. I, I never even questioned it. I yeah. always believed in Jesus. Yeah. I knew Joseph he Smith. was my older brother. Yeah, yeah. And that he was there to comfort me and protect me, yeah. just like my older brother. Yeah. And uh, then when I was about 14 or 15, I was invited to go to a little Baptist church to watch their daughter uh, sing in a program at her church. Oh, was this in Huntington? Then? No, Still? this we moved to Orem by then. Oh, okay. And so uh, I, because I babysat the little girl, I said, yes, I'll go. So okay. I first went, time you'd ever first been in time there? I had ever even knew there was such a thing called the Baptist. <laughs> I never even knew there were. What, what struck you about the, the, the meeting? Uh, just uh, the only thing I really remember is how warm and loving everybody was. Really? And then... Did they have a cross in the building? There the was a cross and uh, of course my dad had always told me that anybody that what wasn't a Mormon was from the devil, so <laughs> I was to be aware. So you were scared probably. So I was scared to death. but. <laughs> I went and watched the little girl sing, and it was a wonderful experience. Yeah. Then in my story, I fast forward 20 years because I, I got married, had two children. I uh, had wandered far away from being a Mormon. Oh, you did? And okay. uh, I... Well, you weren't going to Christian churches, though. No, uh, I wasn't going to any churches at all now at, during that time. Your experience, though, at age 15, you had a sense that Jesus was somebody S different than your elder brother, did well, you? Well, I, I don't know if I did or not at oh. that point in time. Okay. All I really remember is how loving and kind people were. Okay, at this church. And that nothing bad happened to me. Okay. And so 20 years later, when I had married, had two children, my marriage failed, mm -hmm. I had remarried, and was my second marriage was in trouble. And I thought, well, maybe if I take some temple classes and get my husband through the temple, then that will save the marriage. 
So you hadn't been going to church during Have this time? Have not been going to church at all. Oh, okay. So I started going back to the Mormon church, okay. and I attended faithfully. I was as good as I could be. <laughs> and uh, do you feel like you had a testimony then of Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon? And uh, Not at that time, no. Oh. Uh, it was after I was saved that I got the testimony. Really? Yeah. Not of Joseph Smith. Not of Joseph of, Smith. But of Jesus, yeah. The testimony that Joseph Smith is a fraud <laughs> and a fake. <laughs> That's and your that testimony. <laughs> the Book of Mormon is simply a, a work of Solomon Spaulding. Mm. And I learned that much, much later. Yeah, don't uh, we all? <laughs> uh, at, now, at that point in time, I, I remembered that little Baptist church mm. and the good feeling that I had. And now I was attending the Mormon church. I was teaching a Relief Society class. Yeah. And I was being as good as I could possibly be, and, uh, except that I was smoking. Oh. <laughs> and I was hiding it, but I was smoking still started when I was 11 and quit after I was saved. Oh, uh, good for you. So I went one Sunday, I decided I'm going to go up to that little Baptist church and see what happens. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on. All I knew was that it just kept gnawing on me to go back there. Oh, wow. So I, I went in and I sat on the very back row because I didn't, I figured the devils would come from the pulpit, and <laughs> I thought away. I wanted to be as close to the door so I could get up. <laughs> I was That's terrified, now, totally I don't want, scared to death. I don't want to interrupt that part of the story, but I do remember you telling me something about your um, time as a, in the temple preparation class. Yes. That somebody said something that you... I. I was taking the temple classes yeah, to try to get through the temple. Right. And I asked the man a question. I said, in the Old Testament, it's all about Jesus coming, and then Jesus comes in the New Testament. Tell me, where is it that Joseph Smith was coming? So I really wanted to, to, know. to have that knowledge. Yeah. And he pointed out a story in the book of Daniel, and it was the story of Daniel in the lion's den. And I knew that <laughs> that was not... Didn't have anything the, to do with Joseph Smith. Yeah. But that was his it answer. Had, huh? Yeah. He used that. And so much, much later, when, after I was saved, uh, I did go up to him at my excommunication trial, and I told him, thank you for lying to me, because <laughs> it really caused helped. me to really search and really dig deep into the scriptures, into my Bible. Yeah. And I, because if you will look for him, you will find him. Well, let's go back but, to the visit then that you had at the okay. church. and. And uh, you decided to go back there because you'd been there before and felt some comfort there. And yes. so what did you experience there? And uh, I wrote down everything the pastor said. I, every verse that he quoted, everything he said, and it all came right straight from the Bible. I went home, I looked up every verse and studied and studied. And uh, then I went up one night to a, a little service and they were having a business meeting and they were telling the people where the money, where the money came, where the money went, yeah. all of that. I was shocked. Okay. In all the years I'd been a Mormon, I had never been no. part of where the money went. Where, how much I was, comes in and where it goes. Yeah and, yeah, and I was shocked that they would share that with the people, just yeah. common people. Yeah. But certain honesty so, about that, isn't there? There is. Yeah. There is. And but now you you 
told me earlier again that uh, you had had a born again experience. Was this yes, around this time, I, or what well, happened? Right shortly after. Well, it was actually while I was taking the temple classes. Really. And. Uh, I went down to the lake, I drove my car down to the lake, and I sat in my car and screamed at God and said, you know, what's going on? My marriage is falling apart. My second marriage is falling apart. I am miserable. Everything is terrible. What? And then I said, God, if there even is a God, yeah. And by this time, I am so discouraged and disillusioned, and I said, I don't even know if there is a God. So I said, if you, this pastor at that little Baptist church said that you will save me. So if you, Jesus, if you really will do that, then you've got to do it right here, right now, <laughs> without anybody leading me or telling me and because I am tired of being lied to and led down the garden path to just nothing but a bunch of lies. Wow. And I sat there and cried and yelled at him and, <laughs> and there was no lightning and no thunder and I finally started my car up and went back home, and I thought, well, so much for that. <laughs> but my Bible was uh, laying on the kitchen table, and I picked it up, and I thought, well, I'll look at it one more time. <laughs> and I opened it, and it was like lights had come on. For the first time in all those years, I understood the Bible. Wow. I was so careful to, to go with the King James Version because that's what you're taught. Yeah. And I knew I didn't understand it. But after I was saved, and I literally was saved at the lake, Yeah. Uh, I read, I started reading, and it was, it was unbelievable experience. Um, the, it was like the lights had come on. I could understand what it was saying. Yeah. Had, and, you, had you understood, was it a concept of grace that you understood or that Jesus had done everything on the cross? What, what exactly was it that touched your heart? You just, the, just the absolute truthfulness of the Bible and that how I could, could rely it. on it. Yeah. And, and, uh. To, to stop going with how I felt. Because and, then Mormons don't really, or LDS, don't really believe that the Bible's so trustworthy, do they? No, I mean, it's no. there, and it's no, kind of No, I had memorized but, all 13 articles of faith, and one of them said that it is correct as far as it's translated correctly. No. And that is just... So we put such doubt... Just a lie. That, yeah. is, you know, just another lie. <laughs> But, well, that's wonderful. And so your perception of Jesus, I guess, as you began studying changed. Then I began studying, and I found out that Jesus is God himself. Yes. And he's not my older brother. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, miracles just, I mean, I, I read about Paul on the road to Damascus when he was uh, struck blind, and yeah. I thought, well, instead of being struck blind, I was made to alive. I was, could to finally see, see. Well, so what did and, you start? Did you start going then to church, to this Baptist church? or? Uh, well, yeah, I went back to the, my Relief Society class, oh, and, you did. <laughs> and uh, I didn't have a very good experience, so then I started attending the the Baptist church mm. and the pastor kept trying to corner me so he could talk to me but then when after I went to the lake and was saved then I went to the Baptist church the next Sunday okay 
and he, they gave the altar call. Really? And I ran down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I did it, I did it. Oh. And the pastor said, well, let me pray with you. We'll make sure. Yeah. I said, no, you don't need to do that, but okay, <laughs> if you want to. Was there so, anything specific about the LDS church that uh, made you kind of be affected at all? Uh, you mentioned an excommunication court. What oh, happened there? Oh, yes, yes. Well, I studied for three years. That's not a good thing. Long and hard. <laughs> Is it? It was uh, the saddest but the most enlightening time of my life. Really? Because I studied hard to make sure that the decision that I was making was against everything I had ever been taught and everything that I had ever known. Good for you. All of my aunts and uncles and cousins and everybody. It was totally against everything. It's hard to do, isn't it? And it is hard. And when was this? This was back in the... That was 1980. In, in the 80s, wasn't 1980. it? 1980. I was 35 years old, so that tells you how old I am now. <laughs> Well, did but, you, and you ended up writing a letter to the bishop, is that right? I wrote a nine-page letter uh, outlining the differences between what the Bible said, what the Book of Mormon says, and what the Doctrine and Covenants say. And I, I, I showed him how that the Bible was translated correctly, <laughs> that, you, that you could trust, trust it. it. Yeah. And I showed in the letter I wrote the errors and showed them exactly where and, and how. Did he respond at all to the letter? I sent it to the bishop, I sent it to my state president, and I sent a copy to every one of my aunts and uncles. Wow. There were uh, <laughs> 13 of them, yeah. and I sent a copy to all of them so that they would know that I had left the church. Did anybody ever get back to you and ask, uh, talk to you about it? The bishop sent me a letter uh, giving me the date of my excommunication. <laughs> that was his response. Uh huh. <laughs> and did he so, tell you anything that you got wrong or that you made a mistake in this or no, that? No, no, he didn't. He invited me to it. Just invited to you court, to the court. And I went, and they had a great huge conference table and overstuffed chairs <laughs> all around and at the end of the table they had a little tiny folding chair <laughs> for me to sit on and I realized that it was nothing more than trying to intimidate me oh. and I thought I have Jesus you can't touch me Oh, that's fantastic. And I told the man that had lied to me about the Bible story, thank yeah. you for lying to me because it had caused me to search so hard and diligently uh -huh. search the scriptures and find out for myself. Well, I'm proud of you. That's, uh, and that was back a few years ago, so it, uh, you didn't have ago. kind of the support, that the Internet support at least, yeah, that a lot of us no. have had. As we've left no, the church. No, there were no such things as cell phones or yeah. freeways. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mentioned at the beginning that there's this radio station in Utah County. Tell yeah. us about your um, involvement with that. I, uh, my very first job was a secretary at the little Baptist church. Okay. And uh, the the uh, Ralph, Dr. Ralph Neighbor from Touch Outreach Ministries called and talked to my pastor and said, I have been given the rights to the radio station and it's in Provo, Utah. And that's his 1450 AM. And the, he was from Houston, oh, okay. Texas. Yeah. And my pastor said, I know just the person to, to head that up for you. So uh, Dr. Neighbor flew up here and met, we all met together, and wow. he said, well, I'll take a chance. Well, what experience so, did you have? 
It was absolutely wonderful. Was it? I got the keys to the building and went in, and my daughter and I, uh, we started ripping stuff out and getting it and so, painted yeah. and taken care of. Uh, she painted it, about half of it by herself. Wow. And then a, a professional painting company from Santa Quinn came in and Finished redid it, huh? the whole thing. Wow. And, and the technical stuff, you had somebody come in and help you with that, George Colbertson was a engineer with CBS oh. in his day. Yeah. And he came in and he was a Christian. Yeah. He's passed on now, but uh, he got the transformer up and running and So they everything. started broadcasting and there? We and... started broadcasting. We hooked into the Moody uh, satellite network, network or and yeah. yeah, Moody Broadcasting Network. Wow, and well, did you have any experiences that came out of that? People that were listening. I mean, Utah County is like yeah. a lot of uh, very dark. LDS. <laughs> very yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. did you have actually, some? anything uh -huh. you yeah. can remember to share or um, any uh, people that would listen? I guess to sermons people, that were on the program and yeah yeah people would listen and call and now they play music and, too yes lots of music okay. lots of preaching how long were you involved uh, with them uh two years were you really yeah two years and then uh dr neighbor didn't feel like he could financially support it any longer so he gave it to the worldwide ministry and that's Biblical who, ministry. And that's who has it now. And that's so. who has it now. Oh. Well, we so. hope people will turn it, tune into that yeah. and find out what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wonderful experience. And yeah. uh, since that time, my mother was saved and my brother, my oldest brother was saved at my kitchen table. And w were my you pastor, sharing with them, or what were they yes. seeking, or just wanted to listen? No, or? they weren't seeking, but they could see what a change that had come into my life. Yeah. And I had a Bible study every week at my kitchen table, and I had 10 and 12 people there. Really? Every week, yeah. And were some of them LDS? Uh, most really? of them were LDS. What did they think of that? They. <laughs> Well, I, I even had some pastors come in that What's the pastor it? of the Nazarene Church came in and tried to argue. And Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and the pastor of the Baptist Church is the one that did the Bible study. Oh, I he, didn't do it. Oh, okay. I didn't know <laughs> the Bible well enough. I didn't think to, 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 to lead, to it, lead to that, lead it, but... Yeah. That he did. And I supplied the place and the time and the... Yeah. And well, that's neat that some of your family's been able to come come out. Yes. And through your example, I'm sure. Yeah. And yeah. My, but, it, but isn't it a wonderful feeling? Don't, don't you feel a certain freedom that, uh, it that we just didn't like have before? It is like night and day. Yeah. Absolute night and day. Yeah. Uh, when I was saved, all the guilt was gone. Yeah. Every my parents were uh, closet alcoholics, oh, dear. and <laughs> so anybody that has been raised in an alcoholic home knows that you always feel guilty about everything <laughs> because you always think if you'd been a better kid, they wouldn't have drank. And oh, you, bl to, on you blamed and on. yourself. Yeah, oh. children do that. Yeah. And, but isn't it joyful to have this relationship with Jesus that you trust Him and trust the yes. Bible? I mean, it, it's yes. been so joyful for me to um, yes. you know, realize He isn't my older brother, that He is that actually tried. God, and that He yeah. came and manifest in the flesh and all. And, yes. Yeah. yeah, that John 1 1 <laughs> and John 1 14, yeah. I just blew my mind when I read that. and I. I could understand it. Yeah. I, That's when the light really does was, come on, isn't oh, it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. It was wonderful. It was for five years I was on the mountaintop. Just 
instead of loving it. life. I mean, I'm always joking about Lord. that, but study does seem to be the deno the common denominator for those that come to the Lord. Yes, that they start reading the Bible with open yes. eyes yeah. and a willingness to be found. Yeah, and then God does the rest. Yeah, he Holy just teaches Spirit us does and, teach you and. And but you were mad at him for a while. I was really angry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he came through. <laughs> but he did. Yes, yeah. he did. Yeah. Well, we're getting close to um, the end of our little visit, so anything you want to say to your family or friends that oh, just maybe that you haven't already? If you want to be free and have all the burden of all of life and all the terrible things that life has to throw at you, just come to Jesus and he will change you. <laughs> uh, like I said, I always knew, I always believed in Jesus, yeah. but my want to has changed now. Now I want to be with him. I want to. And you, and you know you will be. And Isn't I, that yeah. a great joy? Yes. And like you were saying, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, right. and yes. come and and rest in me. And yes. Well, Ruth, thanks so much for sharing. Thank your, you your story, for the opportunity, sweet lady. And thanks for all the work you've done with the radio station and and mm -hmm. all the that, efforts you've made. That's only my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Well, praise God, and thank you so much. I got to be a wonderful part of it. So. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's influenced a lot of people. I hope so. Yeah. Well, thanks, and we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.